Hi everyone, in this video I will talk about the problem details class and how it plays a role in standardizing error and exception handling in the .NET Core APIs. Problem details is a JSON or XML format which we can use for error responses. This object helps us inform the API client about details of errors in a machine-readable format without us having to define what that looks like. That said, Let's see an example of a response body formatted as the problem details object. As you can see from the response headers, the problem details JSON object is of type application problem plus JSON, and it contains a few properties as you can see in the response. The type is a URI reference to identify the problem type. The title, a short human readable problem summary. You can see the status as well, which is the HTTP status code, a detail, a human readable explanation for what exactly happened and an instance as a URI reference of the occurrence. Since ASP.NET Core version 2.2 using the controller based built-in methods like OK or not found automatically forms the response as the problem details class. This is done thanks to the API controller attribute in our controllers. So for example in my get action I can hide the OK method and return the not found result. Okay, let's run the app to check the response. Of course, I have to send the GET request first. And you can see this formatted error response. Also, if I check the headers tab, you can see the content type is a problem details type. In addition to this, in .NET, a model validation uses a problem details class. When we trigger different model validations, our API returns responses as the validation problem details class, which inherits from the problem details class and adds the errors property to it. I can inspect this behavior with a post request with some wrong data. If I send a request body with a name length of less than 10, you can see the problem details response type and also an additional errors property. But for the exception handling part, we are not covered by the framework and we have to do some heavy lifting ourselves. So to see this with an example, let's throw a simple exception here with some dummy message. And once I start the app and send the get request again, you can see the exception is not using the problem details type. Well, there are different ways to standardize this and I will show you how to use a third-party library and also the global exception handler for the error response standardization. To start, let's install the required package first and add the name of the package. Now, inside the program class, I need to configure this one. I will use the builder services.addProblemDetails method to register the problem detail services. And then I can add some configuration as well. To start with it, I will simply use the exception details property name property to change the name of the error property in our response. Also, I need to register the middleware and call the useProblemDetails method. Now, I can start the app again and send the same request. As you can see, we are now using the problem details type. You can see the new property name here, but also you can find a lot of sensitive data in our response. And this should only happen in our development environment. That said, let's use some additional customization to ensure this does not happen in production. To do that, I have to modify the same configuration. So, I will use the include exception details property and set the func delegate here with two parameters. Then, I will state that I want the details to be included only for development and also for the staging environment. Now, let's open the launch settings file and change to the production environment. Ok, let's run the app. And if I send the same GET request again, the response body doesn't include the exception details anymore. Great. 
Also, if I check the headers tab, you can see the proper content type. Now, let's see how we can extend the problem details class. If I want to create the custom exception class and map it to the problem details object created by the middleware, I can do that as well. So, for that, I need one more class. Let's name it product custom details. And it needs to inherit from the problem details class. And since I want to extend the problem details response, I will add another string, additional info property here. After that, let's update the configuration to map our custom exception to the product custom details class. For that, I will use the map method and provide the product custom exception type as my new custom exception and then implement a func delegate with the exception parameter. To execute the mapping, I need a new product custom details class, which is the extension of the problem details class, and set all the properties using the exception parameter. So, that's it regarding the mapping. And I can now force this custom exception in the controller to demonstrate the response. So instead of this exception, I will throw the product custom exception and use the request path value property to pass a required argument. Finally, I can inspect the custom exception response body. Let's send the same request and you can see the custom response. Excellent. Now, let's see how we can use a global exception handler to implement a problem details class in our response. Of course, I won't dive into the global exception handling logic in this video, as I already have a detailed video about the global exception handling, and you can find the link in the description below. So, if you're not familiar with the topic, I strongly suggest you watch that one. That said, I have already implemented the class, and all I need here is to write a response. To do that, I call the await HTTP context dot response dot write as JSON async method and provide a new instance of the problem details class. Where I want to populate the title first with the simple message, then the detail with already extracted message. For the type, I will call exception dot get type method dot name. And finally, for the status code, I will use the internal server error, the same one I set for the response status code up there. Now, in the program class, I will hide this previous configuration and just register the handler class using the add exception handler method and provide the type of my handler. Also, I will hide this middleware registration and register the exception handler middleware with the use exception handler method. Now, when I run the app and send the same request, we can see a problem details response. But if we check the headers, we can see that the content type is not what we would expect. To resolve that, I can use a built-in problem details service. First, I want to hide the middleware namespace. And then call the builder services that add problem details method. As you can see, this method has the same name as the previous one we used. And that's why I hid the middleware's namespace to avoid the ambiguous namespaces for this method. Now with this out of the way, I can come back to the handler class and create a private read-only field of the iProblemDetailService type and name it ProblemDetailService. Also, I will create a constructor to initialize this field. Once I have this service at my disposal, I can use it inside the try-handle async method. So let's remove all of these 
and I can return the result of calling the try write async method because it will return a boolean value and provide a new instance of the problem details context class. Here I will set the HTTP context property, then the problem details property, and I can simply paste the same code I had in the previous implementation. And finally, I can populate the exception property. And that's it. You can see a pretty similar code to what we had, but this time I used the problem detail service. Okay, let's run the app one last time and send the request. You can see the same response here. And also, if I check the headers tab, you can see the proper content type set. Now, that you know how easy it is to format our responses using problem details with both the third party library or built in problem details service, I can finish this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.